instead of getting in the mud and responding to all those ridiculous accusations and slanderous claims, I'll just keep it with with a, a closing rebuttal, um, a second affirmative, just to say, let's let's look what the scriptures say. Uh, how do we love God? The law of God is how we love God. It's the practical outflow of how we behave in this life. It's what he told us. All mankind uh, is going to be loving God. Uh, we're told in Isaiah chapter 2 that uh, all nations will come to the chief of the mountains in the last days, which would be Zion. This is when the new Jerusalem descends from heaven. All nations will gather to it, and they will learn the law of God. They'll be taught the ways of the Almighty. All nations. All nations. Not, not a secondary standard. The days of Isaiah, there was no secondary standard. There was no other law. There was no new commandments. By the way, John 13, it's the same, same word as kainos in John 13, 34. It's, a, it's the word for fresh, innovative, and quality. It doesn't mean it's brand new. It's not neos. It's kainos. It's renewed. It's a renewed teaching to love one another. Christ is never teaching or superseding anything his father said and taught. He tells us that in John 7. So in the same way, when Christ is ruling over the nations, as is prophesied, Romans 15, repeat in Isaiah 42, the nations are putting their hope in Christ. When the kingdom comes down to the earth, they're learning how to behave with one another. He's going to judge disputes between them. They're going to learn the law of God. This is how they'll be taught. In the same way, everyone throughout all of history, according to the written word of God, is taught, this is how you love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Do what he's commanded you. That's how you do it. Deuteronomy 5, 9 through 10. Deuteronomy 7, 9 through 11. But those who love him and keep his commandments. According to our, our brother Paul tonight, you would have to have a new definition of how to love God. Christ should have explained to us when he said, this is the greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. He should have explained to us that there was a new way to do that. But he didn't do that. It's consistent from start to finish the same way. Why? Because this application of our behavior Discipleship, it's not earning your salvation. Salvation's at the resurrection. We sanctify now. We disciple now. We repent and disciple now. We're not perfected yet. I never claimed that. That was a straw man from earlier. At the resurrection, we're perfected. At the resurrection, we're finally saved. Now we're being saved. Now we're preserving ourselves, as 1 Timothy 4, 16 says. And we do that by just what Jesus said in Luke chapter 20. For those who are considered worthy to attain to the resurrection. So I don't know if Paul, our friend, is a free gracer or not, but he sure sounds like one tonight. Um, I don't know if he actually stated that or not, so I'm, I'm okay if I'm wrong, but his language definitely sounds like it. Because the language is that, oh, you just you just thought, it's just all mental. It's just believe in Christ and then suddenly you're okay. But the Bible from start to finish gives us the same definition of what you are to do if you believe in Christ actively, daily, what you're to learn, as First Peter talks about in chapter 1, but how you grow in the knowledge of God. This is how you love him, just like I read from 1 John 2, 3 through 6. This is how we know we are known by him and how we love him, as we do his commandments, that they're good for us. It's not bad for us. Again, the, as I said in my opening statements, the, the Galatians' cultural context is the oral law of the Pharisees, the party of circumcision trying to dupe people away from faith in Christ and back to their control of keeping all these traditions of men that contradict the law of God. Joshua 22.5, still consistent. If you want to love God, Yahweh, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, you want to walk in His ways. They're not Moses' ways. They're not, quote-unquote, Jews' ways. This is the Creator of heaven and earth. This is Paul's Creator. has told him how to live this life and how to have joy doing it. Personally, I don't, I don't see a lot of joy in my brother tonight. I would encourage him to learn about the, the law of God, learn about the wonderful creator and how he expresses his love to mankind and how we can express our love back to him. And it's very simply by learning and keeping his commandments. In the same way, Daniel, wonderful venerated prophet, Daniel 9, 4, he who keeps his commandments of loving devotion to those who love him and keep his commandments. Same standard. Sirach 2.16, those who love him be filled with his law. This is going to be in an edited version of the American Bible. You can find Ecclesiastes or Sirach. Same thing. Those who love him are filled with his law, just like Christ taught in John 15.10. 2 John 1.6, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. 30 John 4, seconds. 1, Whoever has my commandments, Jesus promises that this is the one who loves me. I want to love Jesus. I want to love the Father. They're the same, right? They do the same behavior. They never change. Their, change, their behavior is unchanging. 
I want to do what they want to do. I want they, I want to love them. I want them to know that I love them. And they gave me a very easy way to know that. I don't have to go to some arbitrary pastor to know if I'm walking in the will of God. They told me how to do it. They told me how to love them. So I would encourage the believe the, the listener who's believing and in faith in Christ. I would encourage you guys tonight to take to heart these verses from the Bible. These are not Sean's words. These are directly from scripture. Thank you.